everybody, welcome to this new video. As you can see, this is a very different setup to what you're used to seeing me in. Yeah, I'm testing this out for the first time. I don't know what it's like. I hope that it's good. I don't even know if the exposure is correct, but whatever, I'll fix it in post. Um, yeah, this is a, not my first Lightroom tutorial, but my first Lightroom tutorial in this setup. And I hope it's going to be the best Lightroom tutorial I have done so far. And uh, yeah, the reason why I'm doing this is not because I just want to show you the edit of a random image, but actually because a viewer asked me, which is a huge honor to me to actually have like viewer requests. That's like really cool, you know. Um, but yeah, this guy called, uh, or his internet name is uh, Moonthink. He commented on one of my last Instagram images, uh, more specifically this one here. And he said really kind things. He thought that the color editing was next level, if I remember correctly, that was the way he wrote it. And yeah, thanks, first of all, for the support. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, so he was asking if I could do some more Lightroom editing tutorials, more specifically for this image. And that is what we're going to do right now, even though I have warned him, and that's a disclaimer for everybody else watching, there's not much editing that went into this image, because as you can see right here, this is the raw image. Mother Nature already granted me with a beautiful sunset with absolutely fantastic colors. So I didn't really have to do much in post to like make this image dope. So yeah, let's just get straight to it. I'm in the development tool already. And the first thing we're gonna do is crop it for Instagram. So to a four by five, I'm gonna go to about here. So um, first thing that you always wanna change is the white balance, but to be honest, well, Okay, that, that does look kind of cool. But uh, for the image I posted on Instagram, I left the white balance as it is because it's looking pretty beautiful already. What we're gonna do is pull down the highlights completely to minus 100 just to save those. Maybe go up with the overall exposure by plus two or so. And uh, then I wanna bring up the shadows just to get some more details. And I think plus 50 should be fine. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> then let's go to the curves and the curves. Yeah, just, I usually just do the S curve with uh, some faded blacks because I like it when the blacks are faded. So that means just taking up a little to make them dark gray and not black anymore so that they're not pure black. Uh, I don't know why it looks good, but I think it looks fabulous. So I always do it on, I think really every image of mine I do it. And I'll fade the whites a little because we've got brutal highlights. Um, yeah, actually, it really looks fine. Uh, so one thing we're gonna do now, which uh, is quite cool, uh, we're just gonna skip all of these tabs and go down to calibration. I believe it's called in the English version of Lightroom. As you can see, my Lightroom is in German, but I'm always speaking while doing stuff, so you should be able to follow. <laughs> We're gonna go down here to the blues and just pull these over. And if we do this to the extreme, you can see uh, the image is gonna become pink. And uh, what this thing does, I mean, I can't really explain what it does and what the actual function behind it is. But um, basically what I have found out is that if you pull this over, you get the ultimate super orange and teal look, like to the absolute extreme. It goes way too far but I really like how it changes the oranges to a slight reddish look and it also gives some blues in some images. In this one it doesn't because, well, there's no, there aren't any blues in this image. And uh, yeah, but minus 42 is a little too much. Uh, we'll go for minus 25, I believe. I always stay at about minus 20, minus 35-ish, somewhere around there. And yeah, that actually really looks fine to me. So yeah, that's basically all the editing that goes into this image. As I said, this image is so little, has so little manipulation because it is so beautiful already. What we're gonna do now is just some sharpening and I've just got my, my standards. I'll just go for sharpening 60 with a 50% mask. I'm not very careful with that stuff. Uh, something I do remember that I did, which I would which I'm going to do now is uh, add some split toning or more specifically, I'm not going to split tone, but I'm actually going to double tone. I don't know if it, I don't even know if this makes sense, 
um, because split toning is actually to have color contrast between your highlights and your shadows, but in this case I'm just going to have the same hue both in the highlights and the shadows and just add a tiny tiny little bit of saturation. I'm going for the hue 35, that is basically just an orange, a warm orange hue. It doesn't really matter if you're a 30 or a 40, I mean you can be very specific, but if I know that I want something to be a little warmer, I'll just usually go to 35. If I want something colder, then I usually go to 220. Yeah, those are the two hues I use. I never, I barely use any other hues. And yeah, that's it, to be honest. Maybe we'll pull the uh, yellows a little over because around in this area here, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like those yellows. I want them to be a bit more orange. So we'll pull them over, and that actually sums it up. Should be fine. I think I like it. I hope you're finding some valuable information in this tutorial. Even though this image, as I said, is barely edited. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's fine. because I'm rambling so much because this video is absolutely not scripted. <laughs> so, yeah. If you found some valuable information in this video, leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, maybe you want to, I don't know, uh, subscribe. Feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye.